ready, ready, ready. I'm back on Reddit. And these are these are random ones that literally just pop up on my uh, in my notifications. And this one, I've been talking about this for a while, about the 3 a.m. Uh, 911 call. And somewhere in my photos, I have not been able to find it yet, I have the article on the neighbors, I think it was a husband and a wife, that are the ones that called 911. And that's, I don't, I don't know how I got the article, I don't even remember. I might not even, sorry, I just playing with my pliers right there, you guys heard that? <laughs> I'm making some copper wire stuff right now. Um, I don't really know where I got it, but I just remember hearing about it somewhere, and then possibly looking for it and just came across it or something. I don't know. I, I, I don't know how I find some of the things I do. I just don't know. I just, I, I just do. Anyway, it's somewhere in my photos, but it's an actual article on the people that called, the, th the and they called because of screaming. And It's just interesting to me that they're making this out to be the ban the Banfield call. Like it's really not about Banfield. It was about the house and the screams in the house. So that's just always been really interesting to me because it's just leading leading us down another trail, li lying to us. Period. Period. Plain and simple, just lying. Um, and of course, you know, I'm not going to release this call. I mean, I'm not going to. <laughs> you know that at least there's this call because there's like a neighbor that actually you know did an article on it, but we don't know if there's a other nine one one call. We don't know if if there's an actual call or not at the eleven forty eight. And if it is, I, you know, supposedly the numerous people and that kind of thing, the way people are like you know, voice detecting and finding out you know whose voices and stuff these are, um, people that are calling and stuff. I mean, people would start doing that to, to the people that were, you know, talking on 911, I'm sure. I mean, why wouldn't they, you know? It's very interesting, since people haven't talked. But tonight, I've been hearing some weird stuff on different people's channels. And, um, some of it I already knew. I just have not put the content out there. I mean, I've known so much of the stuff that people are talking about right now for so long. And I just, I mean, I never had a channel, so I never really was going to make anything. And now when it's getting so close to, to the trial and stuff, I'm kind of afraid to, because there's certain things that are, um, that go all the way back to the beginning. And one of the ones that the, the creators were talking about tonight was the SNUFF film. Well, that went around right from the get-go. And I've got all the pictures for it, and oddly enough, you want to know the weirdest thing about I mean, it's all gross and weird, but, <clears throat> but the... The two creators, uh, or the money backers, or maybe part of the actors in it. But anyway, they're they're in all this, this whole all these articles I've got, and it's a gay couple, and they're they have a, they're married, so they have a hyphenated name. <laughs> You're not gonna believe this. It's either Koberger first, and then Kalvas, or it's the other way around. But it's exactly those names, and they're both like gingers. <laughs> It's so weird. And the girl that I, apparently she was studying like photography or art film or something in the university. Her name is Sarah Osborne. And Sarah Osborne was the first witch to be burned at the stake in the, in the you know, Salem witch killings. Um, which is also kind of interesting that, you know, she would do that. But anyway, the, um, the name of the production company doing this is called Birdman Productions, which is B-U-R-D, B-U-R-D, and, um, this was about a guy whose girlfriend had a clone of her, so he had two of his girlfriend, and he was just gonna get rid of them, one of them or whatever, um, apparently, this film did go out on YouTube for, I don't know, maybe an hour or more, a little bit more, and then it was taken down because it was pretty graphic or whatever. But also during this time, there was a, I know I'm talking while I'm just staring at this one. I'm not even scrolling, I'm just, uh, just staring at it. Um, there was also something going around, oopsie, about uh, the live action role play. 
but it was by this group Instagram guy named Faceless, and one of them is there's Faceless, and there's uh, they're all kind of the same lines. I mean, and they spell them differently too. I can't remember the other name of them, but I have all that stuff too. But but they posted in their le- lingo because they have it's like a fetish. I don't know exactly what they do. Okay, one of the guys, he likes to, like, reenact car chases. So, that's the real-life role play, right? And then, the other guy, they like to reenact fights. Like, like they're actually MURDing somebody. But it's actually live role play, so it's not really happening. It's just a reenactment, and there's, like, blood and bats and tire irons and crap like that, right? So, there's one of those that I've seen. And then there's, uh... The guy that actually played in that particular one where he, I guess that kind of stems around this guy pulls up to like a gas station or something and to get, you know, gas like you normally do. And a guy jumps in the truck and tries to steal it. And so he pulls him out of his truck and he just beats the living crap out of him. So that's what that one was about. And it's, and anyway, that, that guy later, I don't, like I said, I don't even know how I get it. I don't even know how I get to this stuff, but I happened upon it, this interview with faceless and the guy that actually was the actor in that the truck beating beating movie right you know thing and of course they both start out well one of them wears a ski mask all the time that's their that's their thing ski masks and those coveralls and goon tape and goon tape is what you um (coughs) it's like a um like a duct tape but it's for grips like for gun grips and knife grips things so so it doesn't slip in your hand and stuff so that's their sponsor which is interesting all on its own but in their threads and i i've got some of them but i i didn't i i mean i was so freaking green to this and so new to it that i didn't i didn't know that like there's replies underneath you can click on it drops down a box i mean i'd never been on any of these things before and like i said i don't even know how i got to that one have no clue anyway because it was so dark and i I don't follow those dark things so when that popped up it really creeped me out so bad because i'm there all wearing ski masks and like these coveralls and they sell them like and they fly out of there like he gets a he gets a shipment in and they're gone before they even hit his doorstep it's nuts so um so i'm reading this um this comment section and I start thinking, what are they talking about? Are they talking about a a, a film like that was made? I mean, uh, this is before I even knew about or had an inkling about that, right? So this is all kind of at the same time. Now, I, I have to take that back. I don't know if I knew about the other one first or if I knew about this one first. Either way, they were both weird and they were both... Both I didn't know what they were, you know? I had no clue. I mean, I just accidentally found them, you know? So they're talking about the film in there and talking talking about like well it's gone now you know you you paid so much whatever for it and but it's gone now and and this is something i did not know yet i had no clue about people paying for it i didn't know any of that and one of the there's one comment in there where the guy says i would have paid a hundred bucks for that every day for the next for the every day of the rest of my life or just some weird comments and then they name um names in there uh, they talk about the girls in there and other things. And I just, I kind of put it in the back of my head after it. So I, you know, read those because I, first of all, I didn't know what to think about them. I mean, I'd never seen anything like that before. Uh, and then it just really creeped me out. So I didn't, I kind of really didn't want to do anything with it. But I mean, that was in the beginning. So nobody was found yet. I mean, nobody knew who anybody was, you know? And, uh, then they start making these these posts about um, people in the real life actually role play, and they're naming names, and I'm just thinking, you got to be kidding me. But they were. So, with that said, I know you're probably all so confused right now, which I don't blame you. I would be confused too if someone was telling me this kind of crap. But I will eventually make um, a um, video on it. I'm, I, 
here's my thing. I've got so much stuff saved that I just want to get it out of my phone and out of my hair. And so I figure if I make videos, then the information will be there on a nice little package, you know, all wrapped up. Wrapped up and ready to go. So that's my motive, my method of madness. And uh, anyway, so let's get back to this one. So, 3 a.m., 911 call on murder date. Not sure if I understand correctly, but I guess I saw someone, Kim, mom, mentioning there was a 911 call at 3 a.m. on the murder date. Did anyone here think about this? <coughs> Sorry, my brain is really bad right now. <coughs> we have so many fires up here. I may have understood wrongly given it was an audio and English is not my first language. By the way, I heard the audio at house, um, audio at house inhabit subset shack. Edit, Miss Cohen. Cute. Um, let's see. <coughs> Flash Police Department have, you know, I'm just gonna generally BS like noise complaint or an illegally parked car is not an M1 call. Are you sure that an M1 call was placed? Okay. I'm, 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 this is me. I'm reading this right along with you guys. So. I have not read it. I'm just curious if it is someone's going to actually say, yes, there was a 301, 301 AM and can be heard dispatched on the frat house body cam footage. Did you guys know that? So they... Okay, this is nuts. So there's a 911 call coming in just... And it's being dispatched on their body cams while they've got these these kids are giving the, the alcohol stuff. Wow. It's ignored as probably a noise complaint. Holy crap. Then somehow the frat house field report was used as their response to the 301 call. Yep, which is impossible since the body cam footage begins at 2.54. Oh my god, this is nuts. I'm going to have to go back and look. Maybe I'll have to do it with you guys on here. Basically, through, um... 3 p.m. I almost said 3 p.m. MPD ignored the 301 call and falsified paperwork to make it look like they responded to it. And I've been saying that all night. I've been screaming out at the hilltop from the hilltops about this about this um, call. In fact, I, did I do a video on it? If I didn't, I intended to. I don't remember. There's so I'm there's so many ones I don't do videos on, and I get started like I have like four of them, maybe five in my my cap cut little safe deposit box that I've just started and done stuff but I'm kind of like I said I'm just really leery about releasing some of them like you know like the you know the one the the film I'm leery about that I'm leery about faceless very leery about those two actually well not so much the film because those people have kind of disappeared well they actually that's not true let me let me back up the film people were actually all at the grub truck so Ferris was there right and um but so were the um, the other guys, which I have a video about that one ready to go to. There's four different ones, and let me see, I think two two or three of them were at the Grove Truck. But it's the last guy, there's two of them there that walked up right before Kaylee and Maddie got their food. And it's, yeah, they kind of like tease him a little bit for his way. He kind of walks like a penguin, kind of. And so they kind of laugh and are kind of doing a little teasy thing on it. Um, which um, I felt bad for the guy but then again I'm thinking okay well this guy along with the other people the three people that he was with posted a Facebook post the next day um, one of the guys that's wearing a red backpack by the way anyway it said best weekend ever on it and they're just all smiles and I, I don't know it just when I read that I literally got chill, like the creepiest chills all over me and it just reminded me of, like, Stepford Wives, like those creepy movies where people get that, like, like, better than the Joneses. Like, let's get something over on somebody. Like, they did this to me, I'm just them. But it's, like, way deeper, like, way worse. You know, way hor more horrifying than you can imagine. And that's what this felt like to me. Best weekend ever. They're all just grinning at this table. And uh, it was weird. Anyway, one of the guys on there, he does um, all this art. And there's all different types of art films and it's things you can go go through in Moscow. There's, um, like, Moscow um, film festivals. They have student film festivals. And one of their film festivals, it all zeroes around this one person. I can't remember his name. It's a... It's a is it a guy's name? Anyway, it's they make a... Each of them makes a film with this person's name in there. 
which I also thought was kind of weird. A lot of blood in these things, a lot of poison in these films. These, they're um, a lot of people getting beat up. Um, uh, yeah. So, is it connected? All this stuff? I've been thinking for the longest time that that they that this is their this is their thought pattern is that they had to do this to them because they were going to tell them they were going to uh, that's their revenue. I mean, especially especially now because I know they're losing kids from that school I know they are they've got to be I know they're lying through their teeth um, that JLR did a uh, drive through there um, I, maybe I'll scroll in so you guys can like read it while I'm talking <laughs> I feel bad when I just sit here and talk but then I get ah um, through the town and I swear to god it's like a ghost town I mean I know it's summertime and the kids go up you know get away and stuff <clears throat> but it looked like Wow. Um, yeah. Is that one of the freaking cops are have to sell drugs over there? Anyway. So, yeah. So, falsified. Didn't respond to it. Okay. Okay, here we go. Wow, that is bad. As a former 911 dispatcher. Oh, as a former 911 dispatcher, we're taught never to ignore any 911 call. Even kids playing on the phone get an officer because you never know when someone is really in distress you are, and are either a pretending it's accidental to try and de-escalate the situation or not respond because they can't. If this is true, the cop or the call was recorded and the recordings begin before the dispatcher answers. It goes back and grabs everything from them during dialing 911. The department could be in so much trouble if that's the case and even more if they're covering it up. Just like everything else uh, digital. You can erase things, but they can be forensically recovered, and they and they can't alter the phone provider's records. So if I were the parents or the defendant, I'd be subpoenaing, subpoenaing all residents' cell records and anyone that ever previously reported a noise complaint in that at that address. That's great advice. I'm glad I'm putting this up, and I'm glad this popped up on my feed. Wait, wait, what? Can you explain this to me like I'm five? <laughs> oh my god, I love that. <coughs> Excuse me, my god, this is bad. Meaning King Road resident possibly called 911. So here's, here's my next question. If that's the case, did the cops extract that off their phone? Because you know damn well it's got to be on one of their phones if they called 911 and it locks it down basically, right? If you call 911, it'll lock your phone down sometimes if it's set for that and not only that but those oh, mom and dad have to have that too is everybody an undercover agent in this whole thing I mean are we all in a movie of sorts are we their are we their guinea pigs are, you know I've been thinking that this whole thing going on in Moscow do you guys remember back when uh back in the 60s when the college kids would get paid money like they'd go in and they'd you know spend like two days in some freaking place with a bunch of other ones and they'd get like placebos or they'd get this pill that pill and they would check that that's how they figured out side effects and stuff on pills back then so it's you know it doesn't happen anymore you know it's just you know become that and people are smartened up basically but are they doing this on the sly because they don't have any other way of testing is this their testing like what are they what are they what are they manufacturing what are they making what are they trying to uh, to um, get to perfection that's killing people right and left that they lie about obviously I don't I mean if you guys believe that about all these kids I mean I, I don't know what to say I just can't that does not resonate with me and I've looked, and this is something I've done too. Like, I'm going through the reports that I'm seeing. Suicides everywhere. All over the freaking place. Like, there's calls and there's, oh, my girlfriend, you know, told me she's been talking like this. And my boyfriend or whatever. It's every day. There's at least, there's at least one every day. Sometimes there's two or three. And uh, that's a lot. That's a lot. I mean, I don't know if I ever see one in a matter of, 
I don't know, three, four, five months where I'm at. And I'm, we're like double, triple the size. I mean, do they just not report it or what here? I mean, I don't know. But I just find that very, very strange. Um, I learned something, too, that on the Moscow police reports, if um, an unattended death, they sometimes rule as a suicide or whatever you want to call it. A, yeah. A attitude aside on the cop's side. So... I think that's just so, so nuts. Yeah, I'm going to do one on uh, um, all of the, the previous uh, people recently that have been within like the last two or three years. Because I believe there's all a, there's a connection to all of it. And it's uh, really interesting, to say the least. Okay, so back to so the week. Can you explain like I'm like five years old? What is also weird about this whole Banfield shakedown is the unmarked cars and played clothes cops on that night. One, one of the, okay, that reminds me of something else I'm going to stop here. On one of the, I think her name's Kara Willis. She did a, um, a breakdown of the, um, that, uh, light bulb, you know, audio thing. And on hers, what she heard, she heard Ethan say, the feds are here. The feds are here. Or something like that. And I was like, oh my God. Because that was my first thought literally I first thought because because the facial expressions of Fry and the other one camera's name right now um, when they would do these these pressers I didn't believe a freaking word they said now I grew up in a family of narcissists I'm like the empath of the family right so I've seen these faces all my life I know what they mean it's word salad. It's, you know, it's crazy. And these guys are doing it. And it makes me so uncomfortable to watch them because I try to stay away from those people, right? I don't even like to look at them because they're scary. And they'll do anything, right? Because they don't have a conscience. They really do not have a conscience. It's all about them. I, I mean, if they do something bad to you, they just, you know, they'll forget about it. Like, it, it won't even bother them. won't even ruin their day. I mean, like, it ruins our day. But then they get off on that, but they get happy. It's so weird. They're so weird. Anyway, so the plane closed. Cops on that night. Uh, on one of the body cams, a student seemed surprised and asked the officer about the incognito mode. So it didn't seem like it was normal. Then on a recent um, student interview, it was stated that unmarked cars and cops weren't normal. I don't know what that means. Not a conspiracy, just curious. Okay, so that's one thing I found interesting too is that um, when that when the cops were when the cop was like chasing the kids in the field, and the kid the cop said, "Well, why didn't you stop?" And he's and the kids said something like, "I thought you weren't a real person or something like that." Well, and then later on the cop goes to say, he says, "Okay, so next time you know someone's a cop's chasing you down and you're and you know you're hollering for you to stop, you better stop." And I'm thinking to myself. Okay, this is ridiculous. Some guy's chasing you. You don't know if it's a cop or not. And you, you more than likely just witnessed something. Otherwise, you wouldn't be looking the way you are, what your face looks like, you know, when they're... I mean, they looked terrified or caught or something. I mean, they didn't, they didn't look right. And those guys weren't even drunk. Those guys didn't seem drunk the least bit to me. The cops are... What? Did they give them a breathalyzer? I didn't see it if they did. Anyway... And then here's the thing: they didn't ever give me those tickets. Those were all dropped. So that was all. In my opinion, what they were doing right there is they were uh, they were keeping them corralled. It's what they're doing, so that everybody that was doing what they were doing up there could do it while they kept these guys corralled and busy. I mean, you see how long it took them to do to even get their their IDs out to even write a ticket. I mean, come on, that was nuts. But. Um, and that when the cop said that too, that got me thinking how the, you know, the next day, well, we're get putting extra security up at the university and we're, you know, you call any, you know, you'll get a ride, we'll get you a free ride home. Well, how the heck do they know it's not one of those people giving you a ride home or the security guard? They didn't even, they did have no clue who this was. Well, they know, they knew it was, but they were actually telling to pretend they didn't to us. So how the heck can you trust anybody? How, how can you say you can feel safe? When you don't even know. 
I don't even know that answer. <laughs> uh, okay, back to here. I get sidetracked really easy, especially when I'm tired. I'm not really tired, but I'm stuffed up, so I can't really think too much. Oh, this one's got 27 replies. Wait a second, who got replies up here in these things? See what I told you? Told you. I'm not very good at this. Uh, I'm good at finding them, but three more replies. Oh, I am not sure if that was number. Okay. I found another number for... Da -da 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 -da. Was a boring one? The, pl uh, the place to look is the police blotter and scanner for the night. Okay, well, we've done that, and I've looked at all these. And there is a call, but they list it as an alcohol offense, right? Because that's what they, the narrative that they changed it to. But that night, I mean, there was, there was a bus, and they were taking reports, too. I mean, they were actually, um, you know, taking reports, which they, they never do. So that was all of that night was, and that, well, that day, prior to that, and then that, the rest of the day was very, very weird. Lots of, lots of drug activity. Lots of it. Oh, and there was also, okay, do you guys remember where the frat um, supposedly there was the reason why Ethan got in a fight supposedly it was going around is that he got mad at someone for giving this girl drugs that turned, I mean she had an overdose well it's pretty obvious the next day or was it that night later that night there was a woman there was two of them actually but they, they took one of them away but the, the other lady is still there in there and she was just sitting in the driveway it actually names the, the actual address and everything which that's unusual but that particular uh, address is a um, family um, plot, or fa not plot, but family-owned LLC or something like that. And it's to, I think, J.R. Simplot. And so I looked it up because it sounded like a, it sounded like a, to me it sounded like an egg, like a farm kind of a name. Well, yeah, darn straight it was. The guy's one of the biggest um, agricultural, like, like farming people there. I mean, he's like a legend. And that address was linked to that name, which is you guys have been watching my videos, that's linked to EcoShield, which was linked to Kaylee. So what's going on in that town? Are they, do they have a mass grow farm somewhere? But they're growing weed somewhere. And they're using all their ag... Because the, the university is known for its its uh, prestigious agricultural studies. I mean that it's it's well known for that. And yeah, got a lot of growers coming out of that that university. It looks like interesting. I'll have to go look at this log later. But oh, at eight forty four in the morning, they labeled it as a civil matter two room. Oh, what? As the two roommates bickering about something. That is the non emergency stuff I was talking about. Here's the YouTube video of the girl. Oh, maybe it's me. Oh my god, wouldn't this be weird if it was me? I'm gonna click it. <laughs> that would be so weird. Oh. Okay, this is so funny. I'm just gonna do it because I think it's funny. <coughs> if it's me, I'm gonna just crap my pants. Oh, it's, oh, okay. No, but th this lady's cool. Now, I like her. She is funny, too. Oh, she's... Well, I wouldn't say funny, but she's... Oh, uh, I guess sometimes she is. But she's really neat. Okay, where's the volume? Oh, it's way up. Heck, no. How come it's not playing? Hmm. Video, okay. okay. Um, so... On November 13th, so we see here, um, this was... Unfortunately, the date of the, the incidents that took place yeah, there was in, a weapons um, offense. on King Street, right? Yeah, All right, so weapons track. offense complaint, 2300 block South Main Street, 108 a.m. Someone blaring loud music and shooting off a gun, a shotgun. Wow. wow. Let, me, yeah. let me save my commentary <laughs> before somebody comes back. <laughs> um... <laughs> Control of substance problem, West 7th and Elm, 1.43 a.m., okay? And these are report uh, This guys. is 3.01 a.m., alcohol offense, Taylor Banfield. Theft or other, 3.38 a.m., South Main Street and 
identity. I don't know if identity is an actual street, but it is. Lana did a, a, a video that on that. Was at three thirty eight. That was one of the guys. I'm gonna pause. It. Hold on. So that was one of the guys down. You know that sweater guy that kept um, hugging that girl in the white. That guy and one of his friends stole a like a one of those sandwich fold up advertising things off the side of the street or a ladder or something weird um, and uh, the cops stopped him and and Lana has a um, she's got a cop cam on that that was quite interesting too and also the guy uh, they talk about him having a big old bump on his head and Lana says that he didn't have it at the grub truck well he did have it at the grub truck so it wasn't something he got later that night so right back to the story Civil call four hundred. Yeah, these. <laughs> let me let me let me not make any comments. Four hundred block of West Sixth Street. <laughs> I don't know why I get away with it. Um, this is the this issue that is ongoing, as we could see from the police logs on different dates. Requesting oh, yeah, um, civil standby with old roommate. No orders currently. A uh, re- reporting person did follow order uh, a protection order on Friday. Officers responded, no report. There was a parking problem, so now we have suspicious person. Oh, so check this one out. So suspicious person was at Raven Street, which is U of I College of Law, and it was a vehicle parked with the door wide open in the parking lot. Officer responded, no report. That's weird. College of Law. I don't know, it just seems weird. Oh, have the... No, they have, have the... Um, so, no, they haven't yet. Getting it. 4 a.m. Rayburn <coughs> and UI College of Law. Okay. Vehicle parked with door wide open in a parking lot. And if you read through these, it, there's uh, also two other reports regarding such. I believe it's two other ones on two different dates. Two other yeah. dates. So, 11.33 a.m. I don't know. E D Street and North Main Street. Eleven thirty three AM Narcotics K nine search. Watch this is funny. Control substance as well at that same well no. E D Street and Main, but it was reported at a different time though. Control substance problem. E D Street <laughs> and North Main. That's what we're talking about. So it was stop taken. it. They won't do nothing, then they have to go back. Interesting. So <laughs> Homicide. I don't even know if I'm supposed to say that word on here. Let's hopefully I won't repeat it. Eleven hundred block of King Road, eleven fifty-six a.m. Complaint of an unconscious person. Officers and EMS responded. Coroner and detectives notified. Report taken. Oh, I hope so. Suspicious person or circumstance at two o eight p.m. Report of possible drug dealing. A welfare check. Three thirty-three p.m. That's the welfare check for a homeless female who made suicidal statement. Officers responded. Officers responded. You know what? Let me be mindful of what I'm saying because I don't know what words are triggering TikTok. Um, theft or other. Civil call. Sixteen hundred block of Levick. So a civil call is just a civil call is uh, where they like deliver like a restraining order or protection order or something like that. I had to look all these up. Neighbors reporting person has an order with spoke to daughter, unsure what they said. Children are not on the order as well. Oh. Welfare oh. check twenty three hundred block up White Avenue. Welfare check in two days. female she hasn't heard from in two days. Okay. Civil calls. This is five twenty two PM. Request assistance for a civil matter regarding a vehicle title. Okay, here comes Suspicious Murphy. person, a circumstance, 2,000 block. Oh, where'd it go? Okay, they're calling about a dog that was dropped off at a shelter. See, she's not getting it yet. 2,000 block of White Avenue, 5.30 p.m. But look at what it says. It says... Uh... Request assistance locating the dog that was dropped off at a shelter. Locating the dog that was dropped off at a shelter. This is at what time? I'm not good at this. Um, let me see, 12? Uh, like 4, 5, 30, something like that? And uh, 
he's he's just getting to the dog now, or was this somebody else looking for it? Because there was because on those Linda Lane ones, at three or four in the morning, there's somebody out calling the dog, and it's Murphy. I mean, I saw him all through those videos all night long. You could hear him, you could see him, and as well as you know, I don't know if Murphy and Ian, Ian's cat like to play together, but his cat was out all night long, and supposedly that's a pretty expensive cat. It's a it's a like a symptom symptomless <laughs> non um, um, triggering for like people with asthma and things like that anyway so this is Murphy and in a previous report they did they name they named the color of him, like it or what it was anyway what he was but so poor Murphy a dog that was dropped off at a shelter thousand block of white avenue five oh get this i'm gonna see it real quick <laughs> do i drive you guys crazy let me know in the comments because i mean i don't know you guys never seem to say anything about it but i mean who knows so i've been looking to find out about dog bites because there's one point at about that three or four a.m maybe it's closer to four uh murphy's pissed and murphy is chomping down on somebody you can hear him he is not a happy dog and uh, he's going after somebody. And on one of these reports, and I have to find out, I don't know if I'm just missing it or scrolling over it or what, but there is a report of a dog bite. So I'd like to know who that dog, who got that dog bite. Wouldn't well, that be interesting? Um, oh, another straight dog. Suspicious she, person. It, South, South Main Street. She's scrolling right over. Identity. I, I don't know what that means. I don't know if that's actually a street. It's identity. A male uh, standing by 8.55 p.m. A male standing near bike rack looked like he was trying to hide. Area checked. Officers responded. Yep, here's this lady. Unconscious person. <coughs> 1450 North Mountain View Road. Mountain View Park Place. Female in and out of consciousness at this location in a vehicle refusing to roll down the window and is moaning. And there was a domestic dispute. 500 block Taylor Ave. Parties were separated. That was 1102. Um, excuse me. I mean, right there after the after these 10, the murders. Ten o two p.m. Noise complaint. Four hundred block of uh, South Lily Street. Uh, ten. That's ten thirty nine. Was it me? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna have to cut this one off. Because, and wait, let's see what she's doing. That's for loud music coming from that location. And then another noise complaint. Uh, 1600 block of Lubbock okay, Street. Okay, I'm gonna go back. But yeah, you could check her out. She's reporting person Oops. reporting loud okay. banging from up from. Up. She's got a lot of videos. She's pretty funny. Up, right down. She and one thing about her too is she's got like the older ones. Like she's got all the four chan. She's got things that nobody else really does. Uh, she gets a hold of them quickly, and nabs on and does screenshots and all that good stuff. So, uh, yeah. Oh my god, can you believe this one? She's got these two. Okay, read this right there. Can you read the one that's like underneath the green one? I'm not gonna say it out loud. Is that pretty gross? <laughs> Should I click on it or what? Um, oh, I don't know. Uh, let's see, there's another one here too that's pretty good. Oh, you know, right before that too, I don't know if you knew it, but, um, the. Every year, I guess, the guys do to this one sorority, sorority <laughs> fraternity. They build this fort, and then they, like, a, outside of the house, it's like all these big, you know, logs and stuff. Well, this one collapsed, and then a few people went to the hospital. But you should see the spikes on the end of these things. Should we click on it? Okay, we'll do it. Probably shouldn't, but... Um, <coughs> Saturday is 4.51 oh, it's the fort trip. on the East Coast. And um, I want to just briefly talk about what I found. You guys can see for yourself here. Why is it so fuzzy? Um, this weird, nasty, <laughs> low-life, conniving, I'll tell wanna you, be you guys down never tell. You can go back and look at actions <laughs> that these people and frats. Oh, gross. Okay, let me get back to work. Back here. Uh, is it this it? Might be two different ones I've got open on here. Oh no, but this is, okay, this is, oh shoot, I was opening another can of worms, okay, I'm not going to get there, 
because it's all it's all there. Where am I at? Where am I at? You can see what all I do in here. Oh my god, you can see all, all my stuff. Oh my god. Well, where the heck is my other Chad? Uh, that's not it. That's not it. That's my cat. Is that one it? No, that's not fortune. I mean, not fortune. I got fortune, man. I'm not making a video on uh, these guys. Okay. Well, since I can't find it, I'll just do it later. But anyway, the the not the, the you know the 911 call very important. I have to get on that. Yeah. So my next video coming up is going to be um the chap the chap of family the, you know the mom the dad Hunter and Maisie. Now I did a video where I kind of said I thought they were weird and a lot of things were going on and I didn't agree with how she was going about things. Well, I'm taking that all back now. Because you'll see it in my video. In fact, I should get on it right now and just have it posted right tomorrow. Or later today. Or this morning. Whatever. But I take it all back. And I think that you'll see what I'm talking about. I'm going to slow the video way down. And we're going to look at her facial expressions. We're going to look at all of their facial expressions. And let me tell you what. They know who did it. They know it's being covered up. And in their way, they're letting them know. <clears throat> Keep an eye on the beginning of the video. And you can see where they're kind of a little lighthearted. They even kind of have a grin, kind of a little bit on their face. Then they go into the speech. It's, it's only like a minute, 30 seconds long, right? Then it's Stacy, the mom. And you see her look out into the crowd at one point. And let me tell you, she's looking at somebody. She's looking at somebody. And she's telling them something. You're going to see what I'm talking about. And I play it, you know, regular speed at first, and I'm going to take it uh, down to real slow. How slow can you go? Okay, ta ta. Maybe I should. Should I upload this one right now? I don't know. Many minutes is I can't even tell. Okay, ta ta for now. Thanks for listening to me babble. <laughs> and let me know if this drives you crazy, because it probably does to some people. I don't know if I can stay on topic like that. I don't know if I, well, but you couldn't bounce around. I kind of like bouncing around. It gets me, my ideas, gets my um, juices flowing a little bit. But like I said, I'm kind of stuffed up and can't really breathe right now. So I'm uh, in an altered state due to no oxygen. <laughs> Have a great day.